Hey, ¿qué tal amigos? Stuart here from Spain Speaks. Today coming to you with another video about life in Spain and all of the things that you will encounter living in this country. Today we're going to go for a brief drive. I have to go and uh, get something done. So I thought I'd kill two birds with one stone like I did in the past and uh, we'll talk about uh, some of the things that are happening in this country at the moment. Now of course Spain is currently in a constitutional crisis let's say. For those of you that like politics and uh, in particular Spanish politics the last month has been uh, extremely interesting. I'm not even going to try to explain what's been going on because to tell you the truth I have no idea. I've been living here for 20 years and I still can't understand exactly how this country works. It's extremely complex, the system that they've got in place and uh, very difficult for Spanish people to understand and even more difficult if you're not born and raised in this country to really have an idea of what's going on. And this crisis in Catalonia is exactly that. Your views on the subject depend on where you are. If you're in the center of Spain like me, you get one main point of view. And if you're in Catalonia, most likely you've got an opposite point of view. And uh, yeah, so as I said, it's not easy to explain. But I have a bit of a crack at what I think is going on and why this constitutional crisis has, you know, um, really taken Spanish politics to, as I said before, a, a whole nother level. I'll just get out onto the highway here. Petrol station on my right. Now, for those that don't know, Spain is a country that is divided into 17 autonomous regions. Autonomous regions, because of the level of autonomy that they have, the level of autonomy depends on uh, which area you are in. Two or three have more uh, autonomy than the rest. I live in the Comunidad de Madrid, which in itself is an autonomous community. It's also the home of the capital city. Now remember that for many, many, many years after the Spanish Civil War, Spain was controlled centrally. Uh, there was a dictator in town for 36 years, maybe longer, and everything was controlled from the center of this country. And um, when the transition period came in, when the dictator died, Franco, when Franco died, there was a period known as the transition period. And the constitution was established in 1978 and the constitution recognized four languages and the autonomous uh, system or the autonomous community system came into place shortly after that and Spain was divided into these 17 autonomous communities. These 17 areas have their own elections. They elect their own governments. And of course, the most well-known autonomous community in Spain at the moment is Catalonia. Ironically, in 1978, when the constitution was formed, uh, Catalonia had a big presence in the organizational team, let's say. There were seven or eight people uh, that were uh, given the job of creating the constitution. And two of those seven or eight, I'm not exactly sure how many, were from Catalonia. So in 1978, the Catalans were in favor of the constitution. But over the next 40 years, uh, Spanish politics being the complicated thing that it is, uh, a lot of the autonomous communities have tried to get more power, let's say, through political uh, engineering. The central government has always needed the support of certain regions. Normally the, the Basque country 
and Catalonia. And Catalonia has been able to increase its autonomy and its power over those years. However, something broke down after 2010 the Partido Popular, which is the right-wing political party in Spain. Spain has two main parties, right-wing PP and a left-wing socialist party. There's also uh, a party called Izquierda de Unida, which is, a, um, which is sort of the extension of the, the former Communist Party. And there's a couple of new parties that have popped up since the economic crisis in 2008, one being Podemos, which is a left-wing party, and the other being Ciudadanos, which again, ironically, uh, is a Catalan um, unionist party, let's say, that has been able to also get some strength uh, in the last few years. Now we're gonna get off the highway here. So really for the last 10, 11 years this Catalan situation has been getting out of control more and more difficult for the center government to manage and on October the 1st the Catalans held an well, I was going to say an illegal referendum according to the Spanish central government the Spanish state it was illegal according to the Catalan politicians uh, it wasn't and uh, they decided to hold a referendum to separate from Spain and of course everybody saw the reaction from the center a little bit heavy-handed they went in with the police riot squads and uh, what happened after that is a little bit confusing depends on who you believe but uh, some of the images that were you know uh, shown on that day showed you know a little bit of a, a repressive uh, action taken by the central government who thought that according to the Constitution uh, it was completely illegal for any one of these 17 autonomous communities to have a referendum on independence so basically the SH1T hit the fan after that the international press got on board and uh, some of the uh, articles that I've been reading in English papers American papers for example uh, are giving people the idea that Spain has returned to the days of Franco and we're living in this oppressive dictatorship where people's uh, democratic rights are not respected. I'm just going to say quickly that living in Madrid uh, or living in any other area in Spain uh, with the exception of probably the Basque Country and Catalonia, uh, the majority of people would agree with me that Spain is a democratic country. Uh, there are a lot of rights for groups in this country that uh, for example, where I come from, don't have, for example, with regard to uh, gay marriage, homosexual relationships, for example, all of those things here are a lot more liberal than they are in Australia. Australia, of course, at the moment is going through some type of plebiscite to try and get a feeling of what's going on there. But here in Spain, since 2006, I think gay marriage has been legal. So this is where it gets confusing because Spain is a democratic country but the but the central government in order to quash the Catalan uprising resorted to undemocratic uh, means to stop the process happening I would say dialogue broke down a long time ago and that's the key thing here the dialogue between the center and the Catalan region broke down maybe eight or nine years ago or probably less than that probably six or seven and ever since then there's been uh, a feeling of tension between the two to give you an idea of the, the of the tension uh it's it's all it's highlighted a lot in football games and there have been a couple of examples of king's cup games over the last few years where uh barcelona football club and uh atletico uh, bilbao atletic bilbao i think they're called 
played in the final of that uh, game in the uh, in a neutral stadium, and of course the king is in attendance, being the uh, Copa del Rey, the tournament, the King's Cup, and the reception for the king was extremely hostile. There was um, people uh, yelling abuse, whistling, uh, it's like a Spanish uh, like to protest by whistling. So the, the whistle, the whistling was so loud that uh, basically you couldn't hear the national anthem when it was played. And this of course was very, very controversial. This has happened a couple of times in the last few years and of course the uh, Catalans every uh, day, every time they have their national day, they come out in force to protest in the streets about independence. Catalan independence, I think, you know, if you went back 10, 15 years ago, it was around 15 to 20%. Now it's probably around 42%. So it's still short of a majority. But the minority felt that they had the right to declare independence, which is what they've done. The leader of Catalonia, Carles Puigdemont, has gone to Belgium to try to convince the rest of the world, the rest of Europe, that uh, Catalonia has a right to be independent. And this is where it's going to start to get interesting. I have no idea where it's going to end, but as I said, it's extremely confusing, extremely difficult to understand. Now I'm reaching my destination, so I'll start to sign off here in a minute. But this is where things get extremely complex. What's going to happen in the future? Is Europe going to stick by Spain? Is Catalonia going to become independent? What will that mean for Spain? Will that mean that other regions will also decide to become independent inside Spain and in the rest of Europe as well? Who knows? Those are the questions that are going to be answered in the next uh, months, years, uh, if not longer. So I'll sign this vlog off here. Any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. I'll see you in the next video blog. Hasta luego.